Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Taban County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and viewers advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 131. This is the Friday, February 10th, 2023 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for the week from the New York Times. And just a heads up, in an incredible thing in the publishing world, in the New York Times bestseller world, four of these books are by the same author. And if you've been following Library Connections or you check out the New York Times bestseller list on a regular basis, I bet you can guess in advance which author that is. But I digress. Without further ado, at number one, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number two, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number three, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. A scientist and single mother living in California in the 60s becomes a star on a TV cooking show. At number four, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series. And she uncovers a horrifying truth. And at number five, Heart Bones, also by Colleen Hoover. After an unexpected death prevents her from going to Penn State and forces her to move in with her absent father, Bea Grimm has a summer fling with the rich guy next door. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week, at number one. Spare by Prince Harry. The Duke of Sussex details his struggles with the royal family, loss of his mother, service in the British Army, and marriage to Meghan Markle. At number two, Love Pamela by Pamela Anderson. The actress and activist details her childhood, rise to fame, and the ways she is reclaiming the narrative of her life. At number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind in innovative treatments for recovery. At number four, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. And at number five, The Nazi Conspiracy by Brad Meltzer and Josh Mensch. The story of a Nazi plot to kill President Roosevelt, Joseph Stalin, and Winston Churchill. Our first recommended read for this week is the new mystery thriller, City Under One Roof, a novel by Iris Yamashita. Unusual topography plays a major role in screenwriter Yamashita's atmospherically charged debut, a locked city mystery. Once a secret military base, the tiny city of Point Meteor, Alaska, is reached by land through a narrow one-way tunnel. Full-time residents live in one self-sufficient high-rise. And during the eight months of winter, the temperature drops to minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit and it is so cold that eyelashes can actually freeze. And upon this, 17-year-old Amy Lynn 
and friends, discover a severed hand and foot in Hidden Cove, where they retreat to smoke pot. They must be really cold there if it's minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit, but maybe they start a fire. I haven't read this book yet, so we'll all have to read it to find out how the kids keep warm. But I'm digressing. The kids smoking pot in Hidden Cove have found some severed limbs, and Detective Kara Kennedy is dispatched from Anchorage, Alaska to investigate. And that Kara has hidden personal motives for wanting to be on the case, as she does, raises the tension. And then, because we knew there was going to be an end then, and then a blizzard and avalanche block the tunnel, and harrowing secrets and lingering lies surface, along with more body parts. And with the second end then, the disappearance of a mother and her two sons prompts a search that leads to a spellbinding, unforgettable climax and an unpredictable resolution. Well-defined secondary characters include a roving gang of ruffians on snowmobiles who have their own violent agenda. This distinctively original perspective on a community of stragglers, oddballs, and reclusives, to quote from the text, heralds the arrival of a major new talent. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Moving on to our second recommended read for this week. This one's historical fiction. It's called When We Had Wings, a novel by a trio of writers, Ariel Lawson, Christina McMorris, and Susan Messner. Three superstars of historical fiction team up to tell the story of the Angels of Bataan, nurses in and around the armed forces in the Philippines during World War II. Eleanor Lindstrom leaves her parents' Minnesota dairy farm for a life in the U.S. Navy Nurses Corps. When stationed in Manila, she meets Penny Franklin, an Army nurse, and Lydia Kappel, who has a Filipina mother and an American father, and also works as a nurse near the base. The three become fast friends, bonding over cocktails in paradise. But everything changes when the Japanese attack. They are separated by their duties, and the horrors of war take them from military bases and local hospitals to internment camps and prisons. Though they are mostly apart, they face similar hardships, malaria, dwindling medical supplies, and harsh treatment from the Japanese, who have apparently never encountered women serving in war before. Ariel Lahan, Christina McMorris, and Susan Mester have crafted a novel rich in historical detail that immerses readers in the dangers and deprivation World War II nurses suffered in the Pacific, wrapped up with a hopeful ending. And that's the Bookless Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the classic Russell Banks novel, Cloud Splitter, which came out unbelievably to me in 1998, so that is now 25 years ago. So it's a modern day classic. And like the previous novel, this one is historical fiction, although this time out we're moving from World War II era Europe to 19th century America in the Civil War era. And of course, that's the American Civil War era. So having said that, let's get on to what the audiobook's about. Noting first, of course, that the audio is read by Pete Larkin. Cloud Splitter is a triumph of the imagination and a masterpiece of modern storytelling. The novel is narrated by the enigmatic Owen Brown, the last surviving son of America's most famous and still controversial political terrorist and martyr, John Brown. Deeply researched, brilliantly plotted, and peopled with a cast of unforgettable characters both historical and wholly invented, 
Cloud Splitter is dazzling in its recreation of the political and social landscape of U.S. history during the years before the Civil War, when slavery was tearing the United States apart. But within this broader scope, Russell Banks has given us a riveting, suspenseful, heartbreaking narrative filled with intimate scenes of domestic life, of violence and action in battle, of romance in familial life and death that makes the reader feel in astonishing ways what it was like to be alive in that time. So if you want to check out a novel that makes you feel like you're really in the past, check out Cloud Splitter. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation of the week, and this too is historical fiction. I seem to be on a kick this week. This is brand new. It's the new Pam Genoff novel, Code Name Sapphire. The audio is read by Nancy Peterson. It opens in 1942 Belgium, where readers meet young Micheline, who leads the Sapphire Line, an underground network that helps downed British airmen escape from occupied Europe. Hannah, a member of the resistance, arrives in Belgium after narrowly escaping the Gestapo in Berlin and finds refuge with her cousin Lily. While Hannah is grateful to Lily, every day in Belgium increases her risk of arrest. Meanwhile, Lily attempts to keep life as normal as possible for the sake of her young son, despite the growing dangers. When Hannah crosses paths with Matteo, Micheline's brother, she agrees to run errands for the Sapphire Line in exchange for passage out of the country. Then one of the missions goes awry, and Lily's family is arrested and sent to a camp. A distraught Hannah is determined to rescue her cousin, despite impossible odds, before she and her family end up at Auschwitz. It is a mission made even more complex after Micheline discovers that her network may have been infiltrated. Grounded in history, Genoff's latest captivating World War II tale, which follows the 2021 novel Woman with the Blue Star, entwines heart-trending journeys of survival, betrayal, and human connection. And that's the book list review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations. You can even sign up to receive an email if you'd like. And you can also check out the back catalog of Library Connections videos, which are found on the Southeast Bend County Library's YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com, as you may know, and type in Southeast Bend County Library, and then when the page comes up, click or tap on the link for videos, and you'll be able to access all the videos the library puts out. And we put out a few of them. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the library for the week ahead of us. This time around, that's the week of February 13th through the 17th, 2023. You can also find this information online. Simply visit the library's website located online at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, please help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library at area code 607-936-3713 or by just plain dropping by. On Monday, February 13th, we've got two items to bring to your attention. The first is the Great Book Checkout, which is going on this weekend next. And what this is, is that the remodel of the Children's Department is actually almost done. 
So we're going to need to move all the books and materials we've got upstairs on the second floor downstairs again. And to do so requires quite a bit of effort, as you might imagine. So what we're asking and promoting is that people come in with their kids and check out as many books and DVDs as they can, you know, as they can comfortably enjoy in a two-week period because, and this goes hand-in-hand hand with the remodel almost being done, the Children's Department will be closed from February 23rd through March 10th so that we can get all the materials back downstairs and in their new locations. But it's going to be great. So when we reopen the Children's Department in March, it will be fantastic. So just be aware of that. In the next two weeks, you want to come to the library and get your children's books so that you have them at home for the period of drought between February 23rd and March 10th. All right, having said that, the next program on Monday, February 13th is in the evening from 5.30 to 7 p.m. It's the monthly Crafting with Kimberly. This time around, they're making squeegee art love notes. This program is held at the library. Moving on to Tuesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Our first program of the day is Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary. This is a hybrid program for adult learners of English, so you can attend at the library in person or online via Zoom. If you'd like to do the latter, you need to contact the head honcho of the program and series, Mary Alice Little. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have story time with Miss Sue, which is being held in the children's department at the library. From 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., we have coffee, tea, and English conversation. That is a hybrid program as well. And then from 1 to 3 p.m., it's the weekly adult Scrabble, which is held in the library's reading room. Moving on to our afternoon and evening programs on February 14th. From 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have GATLAS, which stands for Gay at the Library After School. This program is for young adults and offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. The program is open to anyone ages 11 through 18, which is grades 6 through 12, and held at the library every Tuesday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. GATLAS is a partnership program co-hosted by the library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. Your host is Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, and the library contact is our head honcho of Young Adult Services, Kayla Crane. Then from 7 to 8 p.m., we have a special Valentine's Day program, Love Poems for Valentine's Day, Zoom Poetry Reading which offers a poetry reading by Akua Leslie Hope, Karen Alpha, and Wendy Lowe. The poets will read selections from their own works and one poem by another poet, All About Love. The reading will be live streamed on Zoom and there is no sign up required. You can type in the Zoom address, which is bit.ly forward slash love poem reading, all one word, or you can visit the calendar of events on the library's website and click or tap on the link that way. And if you missed the reading and want to access it later, you will be able to do so through the library's YouTube page. Moving on to Wednesday, February 15th, we have Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime from 10 to 10.30 a.m. The program is held in the Children's Department at the library. Then from 12, 10 p.m. to 1 p.m., it's the latest episode of Book Sandwiched In. This time around, the novel is Fight Night by Mariam Toes, which is being presented by Randy Hewitt. You can attend this program in person at the First Congregational Church at Corning at 171 West Pulteney Street, or access it via Zoom. You can type in bit.ly forward slash capital BSI 2023. Or again, you can go to the library's website and then click on the calendar of events link and access the link through the program itself as listed on our calendar of events. And if any of that is confusing or you have questions, let me know or call the library and ask the staff. We're happy to help. 
Moving on to our third program of the day on the 15th, it's Mei Zhang from 1 to 3. This is a weekly program held in the library's reading room. Then moving on to our late afternoon and evening programs, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have ATLAS, which stands for At the Library After School. Basically, this is a program that allows kids to hang out and unwind and do a craft of the week. And it's a surprise craft. You don't have to register. You can just show up. The craft is different every week. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., it's the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and via Zoom. On Thursday, February 16th, we've got Kids Explore Homeschool Group Ice Skating. This is a drop-in program from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The location is the Civic Center Plaza Ice Rink, which is between the library building and the City Hall building. And from 10 a.m. to, well, I guess you don't want to arrive at 3 p.m., but say 10 a.m. to 2-ish, you can drop by if you're a homeschooler or a family with homeschooling kids. And you can skate for a discounted admission of only $2. You can bring your own skates or rent a pair for only a dollar. This program and series is a partnership program between the library and the City of Corning Parks and Recreation Department. Then from 10 to 11.30 a.m., it's the Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club. This is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and via Zoom. And then from 1 to 2 p.m., there's a new LSC author talk, this time out with award-winning author Grace M. Cho. You're invited to an insightful chat with the award-winning author Grace M. Cho as she discusses her memoir, Tastes Like War. On Friday, February 17th, we have two programs off the bat that are full, the third in the February Artful Storytime series and the February Artsy Kids series. If you've registered for those programs for your kids, uh, just a reminder, if it sounds interesting to you, you want to look for a new series in the future as those programs are full. Then from 1 to about 1.20 p.m., we have the debut of the new Library Connections video a weekly Readers and Listeners Advisory video cast, which will be accessible through Facebook and YouTube. And then moving on to the late afternoon programs, we've got Teen Dungeons & Dragons, led by Dungeon Master Robin. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. Come to one or all gatherings, and I should note that Dungeon Master Robin is also on the staff of the library. His name is Robin Lash, and he works at the Reference and Technology desk, as well as being a big Dungeons & Dragons fan. On Saturday, February 18th, there's one item there, and it's the great book checkout, which, of course, you will have noticed, is the first item from the 13th through the 18th. And just a reminder that the Children's Department is going to be closed from February 23rd through March 10th. So children's materials will be inaccessible. So you can come and get your children's materials now and help us out in the process so we have fewer items to move from the children's department on the second floor back to the remodeled children's department on the first floor, which is going to be a lovely space you'll see as soon as it's unveiled. If you have questions about this, let us know. And here briefly is the list of library programs contacts. If you have questions about any programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.